Okay, whenever you're ready. Are you recording? Yeah. Okay. So this is physical deterioration breakdown method. Uh, this is just an extended problem, maybe? Another problem. Oh, it's just another problem. With okay. more. <clears throat> so, uh, is it based on this information? No. It just does, it doesn't have text to it. Okay. So your RCN is three hundred twenty-five dollars for the whatever curable short-lived was there. If there were words to this problem, it would probably be listed in a table. Okay. Hold it. I, I think I might want to check. Okay, my bad. Go ahead. Do I get to continue reading, or do you want to take over? No, go ahead. Uh-huh, I think. I mean, I might not be taking this test, but I do understand a little bit how this works. I've been reading. I got skills. Okay. <clears throat> so, back to the RCN of $325 for curable short-lived. And it is, there's also depreciation listed of $425. These... These amounts come from the cost of cost to cure from all costs. Well, there's a chart. There's a chart. RCN is listed two hundred twenty five dollars for the water heater item. The cost to cure depreciation amount is three hundred dollars. The RCN is one hundred dollars for the window to replace. And the cost of cure depreciation amount is one hundred twenty five dollars. So you take the water heater two twenty five, window one hundred RCN, add that up, that's three twenty five. That's where the three hundred twenty five dollars comes from. Look at that. The cost of cure depreciation amount is the three hundred dollars plus the one hundred twenty five dollars, which is where the four hundred twenty five dollars comes from for the depreciation amount. Now the incurable short lived is ninety four hundred dollars. And the depreciation for the incurable short-lived amount is $5,980. Those amounts come from the chart below. The item for carpet, the RCN is $3,000. The effective age is 4. The total economic life is 5. 4 divided by 5 is 80%, which is 80, uh, point zero, point zero 0.08. Yeah, that was right. No, <clears throat> no, no it's point eight oh. So you divide, no, you multiply, no, you divide. No, you divide, you go, effective age divided by total economic life, so 4 divided by 5, that equals 80. Yes, but then you take that 80 and you multiply it by the 3,000. Yeah, 80%. Three, the RCN, 80%. So for, it looks like for incurable short-lived depreciation, you are going to calculate depreciation amount. Like do the op you're doing the opposite for the short lived stuff. Okay. I'm not I don't know why, but that's what you're doing. So the three thousand times the eighty percent is twenty four hundred. So the amount depreciated is twenty four hundred. For the carpet. Yeah. So then the roof cover, you have the RCN of four thousand, your effective age is five, your total economic life is ten. Your percent depreciation is 50%, 5 divided by 10. Then you take that 50% and multiply it back by the 4,000. You get the 2,000. Depreciated amount. Depreciated amount. Same thing with the dishwasher. You take the RCN of 400, effective age 2, total economic life 10. 2 divided by 10 is 20%. You take the 20% and multiply that by the 400. gives you an $80 depreciated amount. Then for the AC unit, what? When you're reading those, read the column heading to, like the RCN. I did. Of the dishwasher. No, say the, R, the word RCN of the dishwasher. I think I did. So the, the for the item, the AC unit, the RCN is 2,000. The effective age is 9. Total economic life is 12. 9 divided by 12 is 75%. 
75% multiplied by the 2000 RCN gives you 1500 depreciable amount. You add those columns up. The RCN column adds up to 9400. The depreciation amount uh, adds up to the 5980. So now you're incurable long lived. <coughs> it's listed at $60,000. I'm thinking that that is a given amount somewhere with all these other numbers. Total RCN of improved. Right, it's 60000 Well, you're incurable long lived. Okay. So the total RCN of improvement is $60,000, which is a given, less the RCN of physical curable of the $325, which we got from above, uh, up above, less the RCN physical incurable which we, we also receive the 9,400 is from above. So the balance of RCN subject to LL, uh, LL. Yep, it says LL depreciation. Oh, short-lived, long-lived depreciation. Oh, you're taking the 60,000 and the replacement cost new of the improvement subtracting the replacement cost new of the curable 325 uh, so 60,000 minus 325 and then and then subtract another 9400 for the incurable short lived RCN and that gets you to $50,275 okay All right. for the long lived because that's what we're trying to figure out at this part. Oh, that's right. It's the it's kind of like you're abstracting out the long lived from the. I remember that from the green book. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So total economic life is 60 years, which is a given. Mm -hmm. Effective years, <clears throat> effective age years 15, which is a given. Depreciation is your 15 divided by 60, which is equal to 25 percent. So then you take that 25 percent and multiply it by the 50,275 dollars, which gives you the amount depreciation for long-lived items, $12,569. So then your f total physical depreciation is your $425, $5,980, and the $12,569 to give you a total physical depreciation of $18,974. <coughs> bueno? Bueno. And let me know. Now your favorite and mine. Ugh. Well, no, we got to read this part first. Okay. Depreciation schedules. This refers to text chapter 10, pages 265 to 268. Number one, often used in mass appraisal. Number two, illustrates loss and value for structures at various ages or effective ages. Number three, often prepared by commercial cost services. And number four, make sure you check the title of the schedule and see if it is a depreciation schedule or a percent good schedule. G, functional obsolescence, refers to text chapter 10, pages 282 to 291. Functional obsolescence is the loss in value due to inability of the improvement to perform adequately the function for which it is used as of the appraisal date, so the loss of utility. It's caused by an inadequacy or a deficiency or a super adequacy greater capacity than is required. Curable functional. Functional obsolescence, which can be economically cured as of the date of appraisal, there are three types of curable functional obsolescence. Number one, deficiency normal requires an addition measured by the cost to cure the deficiency. Follow the example on page 286 in the text. Number two, deficiency requiring modernization or substitution is measured as the cost of the existing items in the cost new estimate less the physical deterioration of the existing fixtures and salvage value, if any, plus the cost to remove the old fixtures and the cost to install the new fixtures. Follow the example on page 286 in the text. Number three, super adequacy. 
It's a condition in which the component is more than adequate for its intended function, measured by removing the fixture with a cost higher than is required and installing one that is adequate. Following the example on pages 287 and 288 in the text, often greater often item of greater capacity are not removed but still result in a loss in value due to the additional cost for the overcapacity. Incurable functional obsolescence. A condition that decreases the utility of the property and is not economically feasible to cure as of the date of appraisal can be measured by using comparable sales to estimate the value loss due to the deficiency or capitalizing a result rent Capital, or capitalizing a resulting rent loss between two rental properties. Number one, measured using comparable sales, the loss in value is calculated by using two sold properties that are equally comparable in all aspects except for the diminished utility. Subtract the time adjusted sales price of the sale with the deficiency from the time adjusted sale price of the unaffected property. The calculated difference in selling price is the measured of incurable functional obsolescence. Number two, measured using rent loss. The loss in value is calculated by using two rental properties that are equally comparable in all aspects except for the diminished utility. Subtract the monthly rent of the comparable with the deficiency from the monthly rent of the unaffected comparable. This calculated rent loss is then capitalized by use of a gross rent multiplier to determine the value loss. This calculated value loss is the measure of incurable functional obsolescence. Uh, pause it a second. If I start waving my hand, you'll know. Okay. Because <laughs> it's going to happen. What, the sneeze? Yes, the sneeze. <laughs> H. External Economic Obsolescence. Text Chapter 10, pages 291 to 294. External obsolescence is the diminished utility of an improvement due to negative influences from outside the property and is usually classified as incurable. Market comparisons similar to those used to estimate in incurable functional obsolescence can also be used to measure external obsolescence, specifically using comparable sales or capitalizing rent loss. Because external obsolescence affects the total property, improvement, and land, the obsolescence attributable to the improvement must be isolated. This is accomplished by multiplying the total property loss times the improvement to property ratio, percentage of the property value in the improvement. Follow the example on page 292 in the text. The cost to value approach. Nope, the cost to approach. The cost, the approach. cost approach to value. <laughs> the cost to value approach. Yeah, that's it. The cost approach to value, the land value, plus the cost new of improvements, RCN, less depreciation, Present, it equals the present value of property, the land value, plus the RCN LD. That's it. That's it. Told you it was short. Okay. How do you want these read? Well, pretty much just like they are. Except, I uh, like that number two. P stands for personal property, R stands for real property, and I stands for intangible personal property. So, you'll read out the words, if you don't mind, instead of just P and R and I. But, yeah. Boy? Oh, you never stopped recording? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Sorry for all the noises. <laughs> no, I did it in the earlier, but... Go. Section 2 review questions. Number 1. Define real property and explain why it can be viewed as a bundle of rights. Real property can be viewed as land and all that is permanently attached, mineral rights, water rights, and air rights. It can be viewed as a bundle of rights because each right can be sold off to another party. Number two, label each of the following with R for real property, P for tangible, tangible personal property, or I for intangible personal property. 
a 14 foot ski boat with a motor and trailer that is uh, tangible personal property uh-huh. a mobile home on a rented lot is tangible personal property a three acre tract with no utilities or other improvements that is real property a life insurance possible poss- policy is intangible personal property an owner occupied condominium apartment is uh, real property a telephone purchased from Southwestern Bell is tangible personal property. And I told you how old this text is. Oh. Southwestern Bell. Yeah. Number three, define a market value transaction. Number one, the price at which a property would transfer. Number two, for cash or its equivalent. Number three, under prevailing market conditions. Number four, Assuming the property is exposed on the market for a reasonable time for the seller to find a purchaser. And number five, assuming both seller and purchaser know all of the uses and purposes to which the property is adapted and for which it is capable of being used and of the enforceable restrictions on its use. Remember the consensual for consummating the sale. That's how you consummate that sale. They have to be consensual. Uh, People. They will have to be willing. Well, sir. I know when you say no, you really mean yes. You really want to buy this property. Come to buy it. Yeah. Well, mm, sir. <laughs> That's what's going through my head. <laughs> Number four. Examine each of the following descriptions and determine whether or whether it is or is not a market value transaction. Mr. Smith purchases Mr. Jones' house using a down payment of $12,000 with Mr. Jones carrying the note for the remaining $120,000. Interest on the note is 4.7%. Savings and loans would have offered the same interest rate. This is probably a market value sell even though Jones carries the note. The terms are the same as the terms available in the market. A father sells his house to his son-in-law for the appraised value shown on the tax bill from the previous year. This is not a market value transaction. It does not appear to be at arm's length and the seller determines value by looking to outdated market conditions, the previous year's appraisal. The appraisal district discovers from a local banker that the house at at 1723 50th Street sold for $60,000. Houses in that area typically sell for more, and the appraisal district discovers that the former owner recently died. Her daughter, who lives out of town, sold the property shortly after the will was probated. This is not a market value transaction. Other sales indicate the property has been underpriced, and the conditions of the sale indicate either that the buyer took advantage of the seller's circumstances or that the daughter's desire to act quickly led her to sell for less. Oh, that's an exigency. Okay. Number five, list the four public land use restrictions. Number one, police power. Number two, eminent domain. Number three, property taxation. Number four, a sheet. It should be section three. It is. Okay. Section three, review questions. Number one, in each of the cases below, identify the economic principle at work. A, single-family residences appraised at $65,000 to $75,000 occupy a four-block area. A neighboring block is rezoned to allow businesses and a local mechanic opens a garage. The rest of the block quickly fills with similar businesses. The value of the residential property declines. The economic principle at work is conformity. The neighboring businesses do not constitute land use and that complements the residential housing. This non-conforming use lowers the value of the residences. The principle of balance provides another way of explaining this result, since the garage is an adverse land use and disrupts the neighborhood's balance. B. A number of apartment owners convert their buildings into condominiums. Rents rise on the remaining apartments. Supply and demand is at work in this example. 
The conversion of apartments into condominiums reduces supply. Although some renters may be able to purchase condominiums, not all will. Some will be unable to raise the cash to make a down payment, will not qualify for a loan, or will not wish to purchase real property. Rent will rise because these renters have fewer housing choices. C. Mr. Villarreal decides to sell his house and list it for $110,000. After two years, he receives an offer for that amount. Two years? I would hate to know my house was on the market for two years. The principle of change explains why Mr. Villarreal must wait for two years to get this listing price. Basically, he asks for too much. Only when the market conditions change will his property attract that price. A land developer is planning to enlarge a subdivision and doubles its acreage 12 months later he files for bankruptcy. The principle of increasing and decreasing returns explains the developer's problem. Given his available capital, labor, and management skills, he has acquired an excess of land. Because he cannot develop the land quickly enough, he goes bankrupt. Mr. and Mrs. Rudge have just about decided to buy a three-bedroom, two-bath, masonry veneer house that is listed for $89,000. Their agent then shows them a similar house three blocks away that is listed for $82,000. They purchase the second house. The principle of substitution explains why Mr. and Mrs. Rudge will not purchase the more expensive house. Mr. Rich notices that the gas station at the intersection of two major streets stays busy all the time. He leases one of three other corners and constructs a second gas station. A year later, Mr. Tardy opens a third gas station at one of the two remaining corners. A year later, all three gas stations have gone out of business. In this example, the principle of supply and demand. The business at this intersection cannot support more than two gas stations. When a third gas station appears, the supply of business is spread too thin to allow the stations to operate profitably. The principle of diminishing returns also explains this result. When the total business when the total business at this intersection is spread among three stations rather than two, there are not enough returns to go around. The principle of competition provides a third explanation. The profits generated by the first station attract ruinous competition. Oh yeah, I mean, this is good stuff to read right here. Number two. List the two forms of highest and best use analysis. HBU as though vacant, HBU as currently improved. Section 4 Review Questions. Number 1. Which of the following are methods determining land value? Capitalizing ground rent is a method of determining land value. The breakdown method is not a method of determining land value. Yeah, we just read about that. That's determining depreciation on improvements. Comparable sales is, is a method of determining land value. Allocation by ratio is a method of determining land value. The gross rent multiplier method is technically possible to use GRM to estimate land value, but appraisers and investors normally use it only for improved property. Allocation by abstraction is a method of determining land value. The quantity survey method is not a method of determining land value. Number two, the first list below gives you some types of information an appraiser might use to divide property value between land and improvements. Match the types of information with the with the appraisal method in the lower list. A, allocation by abstraction. B, capitalized ground rent. C, comparable sales. And D, allocation by ratio. So, improvements typically make up 60% make up of the property value in a subdivis subdivision. That is allocation by ratio, D. The replacement cost of a similar improvement is A, an allocation by abstraction. The sales price of comparable lots is C, comparable sales. And land generated 25000 in income last year is B, capitalized ground rent. Oh boy, numbers. Number three, 
you know that a three-bedroom, two-bath, single-family residence has sold for $98,650. The estimated replacement cost new is $38,950, but has lost $2,000 to depreciation. What is the land value? So the property value is $98,650. RCN is $38,950 and depreciation is $2,000. So you subtract the $2,000 from the RCN to give you $36,950, and your land value becomes $61,700 because you're going to subtract the $36,950 from the $98,650. Yeah, that's a, a, you could easily be fooled into thinking you got to add up depreciation to the RCN, but it's less RCN LD, less. Okay. Number four, a small grocery store recently sold for $115,000. The reproduction cost new of the existing structure is $45,000, and the building's estimated depreciation is $4,500. The value of the inventory and goodwill is $15,000. What is the land value? Property value, $115,000. RCN forty five thousand, depreciation four thousand five hundred, subtract that from the subtract depreciation from the RCN to give you the current improvement value of forty thousand five hundred dollars. Inventory and goodwill is fifteen thousand, so you add no. You're gonna subtract that the you're gonna subtract the inventory and goodwill and the f current improvement value from the property value to arrive at your land value of $59,500. That's probably what I did. Yeah, because you're trying to figure out land value. Yes. In a subdivision, the land to improvement ratio is 1 to 3. What is the land to property ratio? The land to property ratio is 1 to 4. One part land plus three parts improvement equals four parts property, one of which is land. What is the building to property ratio? The building to property, property ratio is three to four. Four parts whole property less one part land leaves three parts property. What percentage of total value does the land represent? The land represents 25% of the total property value. One part land divides by, divided by four parts Total property equals 0.25, and the 0.25 times 100 equals 25%. Number six, the building to property ratio in an area is three to four. A residence has recently sold for $165,000. What is the building value? What is the land value? Building to property ratio, three to four. Sale price, $165,000. Building value, $165,000 divided by 4 multiplied by 3 equals $123,750. The land value is $165,000 divided by 4, which is equal to $41,250, or the whole property value minus the building equals land which is 165,000 minus $123,750 equals $41,250. So your building value is $123,750. Your land value is $41,250. See, they did that the hard way, I think. I would have just, because it's obviously four parts, I would have just broke it up into those percentages. 165 times 75 percent equals the building percentage and 165 times 25 percent equals that land value which i agree with you but i think at this point they're just trying to get you to see it in a certain way yeah, i think you're right probably. because as you get deeper into some of this appraisal stuff you have to do it this way and Maybe. you can't it's not cut and dry to do it the way your brain is filing it you know yeah. what I'm saying well if I see a problem like that on the test hopefully I will that's the way I'm going to do it well hopefully here's the other hopefully thing I will. here's the other thing you can do there are all kinds of checks through this 
I can't you repeat that again. <laughs> Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So number seven. The land to improvement ratio is an area in an area is one to five. A residence recently sold for sixty six thousand dollars. What is the land value? What is the building value? So land value is eleven thousand dollars. The building value is fifty five thousand dollars. The land to improvement ratio is one to five. Sale price sixty six thousand. The land value is sixty six thousand divided by one plus five, which is six, which is eleven thousand dollars. The improvement value is eleven thousand dollars times five, which is equal to fifty five thousand dollars. Number eight. If the land makes up twenty percent of whole property values in an area, what is the land to property ratio for that area? What is the land to improvement ratio? What is the building to property ratio? If the land makes up twenty percent of whole property values in an area, then there are twenty parts land in every one hundred parts whole property. This reduces to a land to property ratio of twenty to one hundred, which converts to a land to property ratio of one to five and a one to no not and a one to five land to property ratio equals a one to four land to improvement ratio and a four to five building to property ratio do you get all that no okay that part i don't get i get it i'm glad you get it if a service station recently sold for one hundred forty thousand dollars do you know that the land to property ratio is one to twenty five no it's one not a question that's not do you know it's Start not. If a question. service station recently <laughs> sold for $140,000 and you know that the land to property ratio is 1 to 2.5, what is the land value? Land value is equal to $56,000. The sale price of $140,000, land to property ratio is 1 to 2.5, so value of one part, 140,000, divided by 2.5 is equal to $56,000. I'm glad they put that in there. I mean, how could you have 2.5% of property? It doesn't even make, or 2.5 of, how could that be part of a ratio? But It's a little lot. I don't know. Okay. A lot in the downtown core recently sold for $80,000. The lot has 50 feet of street frontage and is 20, 200 feet deep. You have been asked to estimate the value of, of the front half of this lot. Oh, this is front feet. Use the 4321 no, rule. This is not front feet. Rule to make the appraisal estimate. It's not? Mm -mm. It's oh. 4321 rule. Okay. Total value of the lot 80,000. Value of the front of fifty a uh, front fifty feet is eighty thousand times forty percent, which is equal to thirty two thousand. Value of the second fifty feet is eighty thousand to thirty percent equals twenty four thousand. Eighty thousand to thirty percent times. Eighty thousand times thirty percent is equal to twenty four thousand. So the value of the front half of the lot is fifty six thousand dollars. Or you could say eighty thousand times seventy percent. But they're breaking it down. I get you. Yeah. So. I see another way I'm going to be able to help you here. Hmm. Well, because if I tell you what, you know, I'm like, oh, this is front feet. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is. Oh, yeah. So, anyway. It's good to have somebody dumb on your side. <laughs> well, aren't you lucky then? <laughs> Estimate the value of the land of an improved office building located in the downtown area. The income attributable to the land is $10,000. The overall capitalization rate for land is 11%. Value equals income divided by capitalization rate, which is equal to 10,000 divided by 0.11 equals $90,909. It's an herb triangle. All right. I divided by R equals E. Number 12. You are appraising the market value of the subject site, a residential lot 75 feet by 100 feet. You have no vacant land sales data for this neighborhood. 
you do know of two recently sold comparable properties, sale number one and sale number two, each of which has fairly new improvements. Sale number one just sold for $56,000 and the RCN of improvements is $42,857. And you estimate the structure is 98% good or 2% depreciated. Sale number two just sold for $60,000 and you estimate the structure is 100% good with an RCN of $45,000. A. What is the contributory value of the land improvement to sale number one? That's the $42,857 times the 98%, uh, which is equal to 42000 So what's the 100 minus the 2? Uh, uh, they're just trying to show you, I don't know, 100% good because it's improvements. So 100% good minus 2% depreciated. Is the 98? Mm -hmm. Well, that's also stated in the pro in the problem. Yeah, 98 is good. Okay. Well, like you said, they're just working it out. It's okay. All right, then B, what is the market value of the site for sale number two, as indicated by the abstraction? It's 60,000. No, 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 no. What is the market value for the site for sale number one as indicated by abstraction, which is 56,000 minus 42,000 equals 14,000. What is the market value for site for sale number two as indicated by abstraction? That's 60,000 less the 45,000, which is equal to 15,000. And what is the probable range in which the market value of the subject site will fall which is 14,000 to 15,000. Number 13, you find two or more sites that recently sold with older improvements. In this case, you know that the value of the site is typically 25% of sale price. Comparable sale number three recently sold for $58,000. Comparable sale number four recently sold for $58,700. What is the market value of the site in comparable number three? So that's 58,000 times 0.25, which is equal to 14,500. <coughs> what is the market value of the site in comparable number four? 58,700 times 0.25 is equal to $14,675. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I'm having me a moment. Me a little softer. Okay. Fourteen. <clears throat> to find land value by capitalization of ground rent, you must have comparable vacant land that A. Produce income. B. That's probably the right answer. It's A. Produce income. Uh, so you don't want me to read these other things? Uh, to find value by, to find land value by capitalization of ground rent, you must have comparable vacant land. Oh, comparable. Yeah, you, you have to have, yeah, no, uh, land value by capitalization of ground rent, to be able to do that, it has to be producing income, because the rest of them don't. That's correct. Yeah. So go ahead and read it and then answer. Do what? Go ahead and read the question and then the answer again. Do you want me to read the other three? No. Okay. Just the answer. To find land value by capitalization of ground rent, you must have comparable vacant land that produce income. Number 15. In valuing land by allocation by ratio, the ratio is calculated by... Land value divided by property value. Section 5 review questions. Explain the difference between replacement and reproduction cost. Define all the terms in your explanation. Replacement cost gives you the expense required to build a substitute having utility equal to the subject property. Utility means that the substitute will have the same usefulness and stylist, st 
stylistic appeal as the subject as a result. The replacement cost will substitute modern design and modern construction techniques and material for older ones. Reproduction cost gives you the expense required to construct an exact replica of the subject. This replica will include any outmoded features of design or style. Number two, below is a list of costs that make up the part of an improvement's RCN. Label each item either indirect or direct, so that backwards, if the cost could go in either category. Explain how you would determine where to put it. Oh, they don't explain. They don't explain. They don't explain. But cost of lumber would be a direct cost. cost. Advertising expense would be an indirect cost. Plumbing fixtures, direct cost. Carpenter's wages, direct cost. Cost of building permits, indirect cost. Engineering fees, indirect cost. You see how that is, how they're indirect. Yes. They're, you can't touch them. Yeah. Well, you can touch them, but well, you can't put how them do in the you, house. How do you how do you touch advertising expenses? Okay, you're smart. Go ahead. Below is a list of improvements. Examine each description. Determine whether replacement costs or reproduction costs would be more appropriate, and explain why. A 16-unit apartment complex constructed in 1967 using designs and materials that were common at the time. Replacement costs would be appropriate for this property. A potential purchaser would consider the cost of acquiring a comparable but not identical substitute, especially since the existing one does not have any unique features. <clears throat> B. A single-family residence constructed in 1917. The house has been remodeled several times, most recently in 1988. Its original quality was excellent and is located in a prestigious neighborhood. Because the property is unique, an appraiser would almost have to use reproduction cost, but the age of this property will make estimating the depreciation difficult. C. A small plastics manufacturing plant constructed, constructed in 1958. An appraiser would probably have to use replacement cost on this property since the technology of making plastic will have changed considerably since its construction. Reproduction cost probably would not produce a reliable estimate. This plant will almost certainly suffer a lot of functional obsolescence. Estimating the value loss that functional obsolescence causes will be extremely difficult. A tracked home constructed in 1991. Replacement cost would provide a reliable estimate for this property. Since it is a track house, it will not possess many unique features. Number four, estimate the RCN of the following improvements as of January 2014. Refer to the chart listed on page 44 in the student outline. Here is the formula for using cost indexes. Appraisal date index divided by historical date index times cost of improvement equals RCN. A Class E property was constructed in January 2010 for $125,000. One fifth of the cost is attributed to land. Personal property represents $25,000. So the appraisal date index lists this class E property at one fourteen twenty point six. The most recent, yeah. Appraisal date index is the most recent index. You're going to divide that by the historical date index, at which it has it listed as nine seventeen point two, multiplied by the seventy five thousand equals one hundred sixteen thousand one hundred sixty three dollars. For what? What are you looking for here? What does that $116,000 do? Oh, that's the RCN. Yeah, they're looking for the RCN. Now. That's the, so $116,163 is the RCN of that property. Class D property was constructed in June, 20, uh, June 2011 for $200,000. 
Land represents one-fourth of the cost, and personal property re represents $10,000. <clears> so the appraisal date index is 1471.2. Historical date index is 1115.4 is times the $140,000. Which is equal to $184,658 for RCN on that improvement. Okay. The $140,000 probably comes from Damn. Okay. Cla a Class A property was constructed in January 2012 for $500,000. One fifth of that cost is attributed to land, and personal property represents $100,000. The appraisal date index is 1482.4 divided by the historical date index of 1260.3. Multiply that by 300,000 and you get that by subtracting out the land value and the pro personal property value. Subtract land value first. So land value first. Then personal property. Then personal property to give you the new RCN of $352,868. Yes. Yeah, that order of, oper order of event there matters. Yes. Yeah. Number five, match the method of estimating costs with the appropriate description. Then rank each method according to accuracy. Uh... What are my uh, AB? Down on the below. Oh, it's on the back page. So, multiply unit cost times appropriate value from the cost schedule. The answer is D, square foot method, the third most accurate. Compile cost of every component, every type of labor, each individual fee, and all profits and other costs. This is the quantity survey, which is the most accurate. The most time consuming. Yeah, it doesn't say that, but it says it in the text. Uh, divide improvement into various components and measure each. That is unit in place. That is the second most accurate. Oh wait, let's go back to that one. Divide improvement into various components and measure each. Multiply size of each component times appropriate cost from schedule. That's the full question. And that uses the unit in place, which is the second most accurate. And lastly, divide the current year cost index by cost index for year of construction. Multiply times the original cost. That is cost index trending, which is the least are less accurate. Section 6 review questions. Define depreciation. A headache. Oh. <laughs> Define depreciation. Value lost from any and all causes including physical, functional, and external obsolescence. Number 2. Distinguish between curable and incurable depreciation. Explain why economic obsolescence is always incurable. Depreciation is curable if the cost of correcting the problem equals or is lower than the value that the cure adds. Economic obsolescence is always incurable because its causes lie outside the subject property. Owning the subject does not automatically mean you have, right, you have property rights over the cause of the depreciation. Number three, define the terms of effective age, economic life, and remaining economic life. A property's effective age is the amount of its economic life that has elapsed as of the date of appraisal. A property's economic life is the time period over which it will have monetary value measured from construction. Oh, it will have monetary value measured from construction. There shouldn't really shouldn't be. A property's remaining economic life is the period from the date of the appraisal until the property's economic life will end. Effective age plus remaining economic life pauses. Pauses. Where did that come from? 
effective age plus remaining economic life equals total economic life. Number four. Oh. You <laughs> sorry. You estimate your subject properties RCN at one hundred thousand dollars. It needs painting, which will cost three thousand dollars. The carpet needs to be replaced at a cost of six thousand dollars, and the roof needs to be repaired at a cost of eight thousand five hundred dollars. Painting makes up two thousand. $200 of RCN, carpeting makes up $5,000 of the RCN, and the roof makes up $7,000 of RCN. The property currently has an effective age of 18 years. Uh, Curing these problems will reduce the effective age to 10 years. The property's economic life is 40 years. What is the depreciation? What is the improve, estimated improvement value? So, uh, the RCN total for curable short lived. I'm not there yet. Oh, okay. Give me a second. Okay. So the RCN amount from curable short lived items is the uh, adding up all of the RCN for each item. The paint of 2,200. For the five thousand for carpet and the seven thousand for the roof, and that totals the fourteen thousand two hundred. The depreciation amount for the curable short-lived items is done in the same manner. Um, the paint cost to cure is three thousand. Carpet cost to cure six thousand. Roof cost to cure eight thousand five hundred. Add those up, the total is seventeen thousand five hundred. For the incurable items. The RCN is $85,800. You get that by the total RCN of $100,000 minus the RCN of curable items that we found in the first step of $14,200 gives you the value of RCN and curable items $85,800. The depreciation amount is $21,450. That comes from your effective age divided by the economic life, so that's 10 divided by 40, which is equal to 0.25, and you take that 0.25 and you multiply it back to the 85,800 that we found in the second step to give you the depreciation of incurable items of $21,450. So your incurable depreciation, that's just what's left over, I guess. No, they use that economic life. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So your RCN, your total RCN is $100,000. Your total depreciation is $38,950. Um, RCN LD, replacement cost new, 100000 minus less depreciation of 38950 equals of 61000 that's just the improvement value. Sixty-one thousand and fifty dollars. Did I steal your thunder? Well, I, I, I don't know why you didn't let me finish it, but it was okay. I, I was thinking out loud, that's why. You can okay. finish it if you want. No, you did it. Okay. So, number five, you estimate your subject improvements replacement cost as $85,000. Below is a table of curable depreciation and associated replacement costs. The improvement's effective age is currently 25 years. Curing these problems will reduce effective age to 10 years. The improvement's economic life is 60 years. What is the depreciation? What is the estimated market value of the improvement? The problem needs a roof. The cost to cure is 75,000. The RCN is 6,000. The problem, it needs paint. Cost to cure is six thousand. The RCN is five thousand. The problem it needs a new floor. The cost to cure is twelve thousand. The RCN is ten thousand five hundred. Uh, the problem is it needs new catch. I don't know what that is. I've seen that in a couple places. Hmm. The cost to cure is fifteen thousand, and the RCN is twelve thousand. RCN 
your total RCN is 33,500 and those come from all of the RCN values uh, from the chart above. Your item paint is 5,000. The catch is 12,000. The flooring is 10,500 and the roof is 6,000. Add all those up, that's 33,500. So that's the curable short-lived items for RCN. The depreciation of curable short-lived items is uh, you add those items up from the chart above. The paint is 6,000. The catch is 15,000. The flooring is 12,000 and the roof is 7,500. Bringing the total cost to cure for depreciation is uh, $40,500. Your incurable items are the total RCN of 85,000, which was given in the problem. Total cost of curable short-lived items is 40,500. You can't say it's the total cost of depreciation because we're not done depreciating. I, I said, okay. Sorry, look it. You ready to move on to the incurable yeah. part? Mm -hmm. So the incurable items is the total RCN, which is 85,000 given in the problem, less the RCN of the curable items, which we found in the first part of the problem, which was 33,500, which that means the RCN of incurable items is equal to 51,500. To find the the depreciation of incurable items, you take the effective age of 10 and the economic life of 60 and divide the 60 by the 10, which equals to 0.1667. That gives the incurable depreciation amount of $8,585. And then your, your RCN total is $85,000. Your total depreciation is $49,085. You take the, RD, the RCN of $85,000 less the depreciation of the $49,085, and that gives the improvements value of The only thing that confused me with all of that is... That's the way they lay it out for me. I don't know about for you. Oh, no, I get the way they're laying you it did. out, yeah. Okay. But they're... The effective age... Wait, wait, okay, go. go. Okay, okay. Ready? Go. Mm -hmm. Number six. Property A, property A contains 1,650 square feet. It is an eight-year-old Class Three property. The property needs a hip roof and a slab is cracked. What is the estimated market value of the improvement? Refer to the chart on page 40 in the outline. Schedule value for a class three 1,600 square feet is $24.20. Less value for a hip roof minus $3.25. Residual schedule value is $20.95. Residual va schedule value times 1,650 square feet, uh, $34,567.50. Less 5% for the cracked slab is $1,728.38. So the estimated RCN before depreciation is $32,839.12. Apply eight-year-old class three percent good depreciation of 0.85, and that estimated market value of improvement rounded is $27,913. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. 5% for the crack lab. I wonder if, it, I wonder if this is the, at that property in the green book. Okay, go ahead. List the six forms of depreciation using the breakdown method for physical deterioration. Give one example of each and tell how each type is measured. Number one, physical curable 
short-lived rotten porch less replacement cost cost to cure right mm -hmm. uh, number two physical incurable short-lived less five year old it's not less. Those it's, are dashes. oh those are dashes that's yeah. why I was asking if it was less okay, okay. So let me reread number one. Okay. One, physical curable, short-lived, rotten porch, replacement cost, cost to cure. That's how you're going to measure it. That's the, using the breakdown method. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we, first you have to list the six forms of depreciation, which those are physical curable, short-lived, physical incurable, short-lived, physical incurable, long-lived, um, functional curable obsolescence, functional incurable obsolescence, and economic obsolescence. All right. So then you have to use the breakdown method for physical deterioration and give an example of each and tell how each type is measured. So for the physical curable short-lived, the physical deterioration is a rotten porch you would measure it by replacement cost and it would be cost to cure. Cost to cure. So for physical incurable short-lived, the example is a five-year-old, 25-year roof cover. Um, breakdown method is RCN times age life ratio of components. Number three. Age divided by life. Oh, age divided by life. Yeah. Okay. So number three, physical incurable long-lived. Uh, they didn't give a physical deterioration, but um, or maybe the they did. structure or, or base structure. The base structure. Framing, uh, oh, foundation. Oh, I see. That's the... That's the... That's the that's okay. example. Gotcha. So it's... That's the bad physical deterioration. And then... Um, replacement cost of bone or base structure times age divided by life ratio of the building. So number four, for functional curable obsolescence, it's got an outdated bath. Um, it's measured by replacement cost or cost to cure. Number five, functional incurable obsolescence, it's got a poor room arrangement. Um, and it is measured by uh, comp sales or capitalized rent loss. Yes. And number six, economic obsolescence. It's got traffic congestion. It's measured by comp sales or capitalized rent loss times building divided by property ratio. Okay, number eight. State the formula for calculating lump sum physical deterioration using physical actual age. So physical actual age divided by, divided by total economic life equals percent of depreciation. Number nine. More charts. Oh, I can hardly wait. Estimate the total amount of physical deterioration suffered by the office building. You are appraising a 10-year-old office building and have estimated its RCN at $150,000. So your RCN, uh, your RCN is $19,500 for curable physical deterioration. And it is figured out by the following chart. You can just, you don't have to read that text. You can just. Okay. Well, maybe you do. Yeah, go ahead and read it. Okay. Painting the exterior is $10,000. It's included in the RCN. Repair the front doors is $1,500 included in the RCN. Painting the interior, um, $8,000. It's included in the RCN. So the sum of those is... The sum of those is the $19,500. The cost to cure of those is the same amount, $10,500 and $8,000 added together. It's the $19,500. Do, do you know why it's that way? 
it hasn't been that way up to this part. I know. I think the thing is it's included in RCN. The depreciation amount? Uh-uh, the cost of cure. Or the cost of cure, I mean. I don't know if this is depreciation side. Because this is a this is breakdown method. This is a new me a different method for. So anyhow, but that's some other things to think about. Okay, okay, go ahead. Um. Incurable. Yeah, I was just looking, thinking that we're gonna we've we've never had this incurable quite this detailed up to right. this point. So maybe this is the focus is breakdown. on the incurable. Well, it's breakdown. We're breaking everything down. Okay. No. So, the incurable physical short-lived deterioration is uh, figured by you take the item for floor covering. Its RCN is eleven thousand. Its effective age is 10, the economic life is 20. So your percent depreciation is 0.5. You take the 10 divided by 20 equals 0.5. So that gives you a depreciation amount of 5,500 for floor covering. For roof covering, uh, the RCN is 12,000, the effective age is 10, economic life is 25. So you take the 10 divided by 25 gives you the 0.4 multiply by the 12,000 to give you the 4,800. I didn't say that in the line above. For the floor the floor covering, you would take the 0.5 that we figured and you're going to multiply that by the 11,000 to get the 5,500. So, uh, for heating and air conditioning, um, the RCN is 7,500. Effective age is 10. Economic life is 15. 10 divided by 15 equals 0.6 Six six seven multiplied by the seventy five thousand uh, seven thousand five hundred RCN to give a depreciation amount of five thousand dollars. The plumbing fixtures have an RCN of three thousand dollars. The effective age is ten. Economic life is thirty. Ten divided by thirty equals point three 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 three. Take that multiplied by the three thousand RCN gives you a depreciation amount of a thousand dollars. Total RCN of incurable physical short-lived deterioration is 33,500. The total incurable physical short-lived amount for deterioration is 16,300. So if you take, that doesn't add up, so, oh, incurable physical long-lived deterioration you estimate the effective age of the basic structure to be 10 years and the total economic life of the structure to be 50 years. So your total RCN is $150,000, which is given in the original problem. And the curable RCN is $19,500. And your Incurable short-lived RCN is thirty-three thousand five hundred. So your incurable, well, you can't figure that part yet. You've got to go figure out your depreciation percentage. Incurable what? Long-lived. Long-lived, because you've got you take you add you subtract. Well, ten ten divided by fifty, and that twenty percent. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You've got to go get your effective age. Of ten, um, divided by fifty. Divided by the fifty of economic life gives you the point two zero depreciation percent. So then, but then where are they getting the ninety seven thousand? Okay. Okay. So the uh, in, the incurable physical long lived deterioration is ninety seven thousand, and they got that by taking the total RCN of 150,000 minus the curable RCN of 19,500 and subtracting the incurable short-lived RCN of 33,500. That to, equals the 97,000. That equals the 97,000. To get the 0 0.20 depreciation percent, you take the effective age of 10 and divide it by the economic life of 5, and that equals 0 0.20 uh, depreciation percent 
you take the 97,000 times the 0 0.20 depreciation percent and your incurable long-lived deterioration is $19,400. And so you, okay, all right, go ahead. Well, I see here what they've done is they've taken the curable physical deterioration of 19,500. The RCM side. The, yeah, and they've added the incurable physical short-lived deterioration of 33,500 and added the 97,000 incurable physical long-lived deterioration to have to check that you've got a total RCN of $150,000. So if you do that on the depreciation side, you can see that curable physical deterioration depreciation is 19,500, add the 16,300 for incurable physical short-lived deterioration and add the 19,400 for the incurable physical long-lived deterioration and your total depreciation is 55,200. Oh. Because well, let's Okay. Read it again. Number 10, state the formula for calculating lump sum physical deterioration using effective age life. Effective age divided by total economic life equals percent of depreciation. It's a little late to be asking that. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Number 11. The lump sum method is of estimating physical deterioration is used most often in mass appraisal. Number 12. Depreciation does not include loss of value due to market decline. Number 13, there is a danger of double counting for functional obsolescence by using it in both the cost estimate and depreciation estimate. Number 14, in the market method of estimating depreciation, which of these calculations is used? RCN minus sale price of comparable improvements. Number 15, in relation to long-lived components, short-lived components depreciate more rapidly. Quiz number one. There are no answers here. They're on the top of page 49. Do you want me to go to 49? 